Can a Shopify product really be too saturated? I personally don't think so. So in this video, I'm going to reveal to you three strategies along with some live examples on how you can make $100,000 drop shipping with saturated products. <laughs> What's popping people, it's your boy the beast of Ecom and I am back with another video dropping the thing but you already know, value bombs. Last minute I decided to do a giveaway on this video. I'm gonna be giving away $100 to two lucky people on this video. So to enter, all you gotta do is make sure you're following the channel, drop a like on this video and comment down below what you want to achieve in 2022. I'll be picking a winner on Monday the 20th of December. You may have heard of products being too saturated to sell, but what does this actually mean? A saturated product is generally something that's been heavily sold by a lot of marketers. So essentially it's been seen or bought by a lot of people in the market. Hence why they probably don't have much interest or want to buy the product again. Most people would say these products are dead. Do not sell them. But it's still possible to make money with these products if you follow one of these three strategies I'm about to reveal to you. Before I do that, make sure of course you drop a like on the channel and a comment down below with any questions that you do have. It will help out the channel immensely. Make sure of course you subscribe to the channel with the notification bell on so that you don't miss any of my videos. So onto the first strategy. Now this first strategy is called finding an angle. And essentially what I'm gonna show you is I'm gonna reveal to you three different companies that were all selling the exact same product, okay, to different audiences uh, with a different angle, okay? Now this is the first uh, iteration of this actual product. And I'll show you the product, most of you may be familiar with it. You can see here that it is the, the, the floppy catfish, the interactive catfish, uh, it flops around, etc. But you can see here that this absolutely crushed it with this advert to this market and with this angle of cat owners. You can see here that it had uh, 68,000 likes on this down here. You can see it had 54,000 comments and uh, 25,000 shares. This is something that pretty much went viral for these guys and no doubt they make a bunch of money off this actual advert, okay? So what can we actually do or what can other marketers actually do? And if you actually have a look at this toy on AliExpress, you can see that all of these, um, you know, these suppliers have been selling multiple thousands. This best was owner has had um, 9,000, this one's had 9,000, 6,000, 6,000. So on the surface of things, this may seem saturated to a lot of people, okay? But what could we do if we actually wanted to sell this product but not sell it to cat owners? Well, what we can do is find a different niche to sell to. And that's exactly what these guys done. You can see here what they've done is, this is Perky Pets, okay? And these guys have took the exact same product but instead of selling the exact same product to cat owners, which predominantly this uh, has been you know, marketed towards, right? They've flipped that and said, okay, well, if cats are interested in it, nine times out of 10, dogs are gonna be interested in it and dog owners are going to be interested in this product as well. And you can see here that the success that these guys have had with this exact same product, okay? I'll play the video so you can see, but essentially uh, same kind of video. So showing, you know, the actual animals themselves interacting with the product, uh, it's the exact same product, okay? And you can see here that this ad has crushed it for these guys as well. So it's had 13,000 likes on this video. It's had 10,000 comments and 3.2 thousand shares. So what they've done essentially is found a different angle and a different niche to sell the exact same product to. And like I said, I'm gonna give you uh, three examples so it doesn't actually stop here as well. So let me show you the final example of selling this exact same product to a different niche. So this company is called Peachy and Pear. And essentially they've took the exact same product that both of those previous companies that I've just shown you and thought to themselves, okay, well, if cats are interested and pets are interested in it, then maybe kids may be interested in it. And you can see here, they are selling the exact same product, but they market it towards, um, you know, mothers, parents, grandparents, people who have kids essentially. And you can see here that kids actually love the product. So, you know, all they've done essentially is found a different niche and a different angle for the product. And this is gonna help separate you between selling products to the exact same audience you know, these saturated products um, to these exact same owners who have seen the products over and over again, or coming up with a different angle that you can use and finding a different kind of niche to be able to sell to, okay? You can see here that these guys are running uh, 150 adverts for this actual, um, for this brand, which tells me they're actively spending money. So hence, 
actively making money, uh, one would hope. And you can see here that they're pretty much just all branded towards mother and parents. And that's just one example and one strategy that you can do. Look at an actual product, okay? And think to yourself, can you sell it to a different niche? We've got cats here, we've got dogs here, and we have babies here for the exact same product. Some products will be easier to find angles than others. You want to try and think outside of the box, because that's where the biggest profits are going to come from. One thing you can do is if you're selling to a niche is try and sub niche down. For example, we've just seen a sell into pets. You can sub niche down into cats, dogs, etc. Alternatively, you could take it a step further and go even to specific dog breeds. I know there's a lot of big followers for people who own pugs or Labradors. Now the second strategy is improving upon an existing already winning product. If something is already winning, okay, and you want to have the step up and make money from it, then one thing you can do is you can improve the product in some way, shape or form, right? So I'm gonna give you a live example here, for example. Everyone knows that this product here, I'll show you what it looks like. This product has been selling since probably like 2019, if I'm being 100% honest. Uh, this product would be considered for anyone who's been doing Facebook marketing for a long period of time, that this is a saturated product. It's been running for uh, a long period of time, okay? Marketers have absolutely rinsed this product, okay? And you can see here that these guys have been um, doing all right with it. So 6,000 likes, uh, 1,000 comments, and 2.7 thousand shares, right? Now, what can you do with something like this in terms of uh, improving upon you know, the product basis itself? Well, let me show you and give you an example of a company which has done just that. So these guys have taken existing product which has worked for a long period of time and improved upon the product. And let me just click play for my football fans. This is John Terry in this advert. You can see here that um, it actually has, you can hook it up to your your TV or I think your mobile app and actually count how many times you, ha you hit the ball and uh, be competitive with the family. Now the angle that they've actually taken with this product is uh, rather than this one here, which most of the time in most of the adverts you will see people in boxing rings or professional boxers or semi-pro boxers actually using it. These guys have taken the angle of more of a, you know, advertising for more kids, family, fun, creative, competitiveness, and again, that's just playing on those angles along with a improved upon product. One thing I will say is you don't want to start going out and contacting manufacturers if you haven't already validated a product. To still use this product while testing if you are drop shipping is heading onto AliExpress and trying to find a product that has already been approved upon and trying to find a different variation of something which has already been selling really well in the market. Now the third strategy is building a brand and community around a product. Now, let me show you this product. A lot of old school, familiar Facebook marketers will know what this product is. This product was drop shipped by the masses. Uh, a lot of people were drop shipping this product. It was a handheld uh, head razor. You can see that these guys were running this back in 2019 and probably made a pretty penny from it back then, especially when CPMs were cheaper and all those kind of things. You can see it had 5,000 likes on it, 1,000 comments on it, and 2,000 shares on this actual product. And uh, this story is actually still running to this day, believe it or not. And if you actually have a look at this website, again, uh, this is a drop shipping product. Again, you can find this on AliExpress, okay? Um, loads of people have sold this product. But what you want to do is, this will great, this may get you some sales, but if you want to take it to the bigger numbers or especially try and sell something like this, you don't want to drop ship like this. You're going to have to try and build a brand and community around it. So let me show you a company which has done just that. So these guys have built a brand around this actual product. Uh, they've got some user generated content now. They also have, you know, custom boxes, the logo on a product, etc. But the product itself is the exact same thing. Okay. And uh, what they've got, of course, is they've got influencers, user generated content like this video here, and they've absolutely crushed it with this product and building a community for uh, bold men, you know, or men who want to just get a real quick set shave without having to use, you know, Know, the traditional razors um, or going to the barbers. You can see that this ad itself actually, um, you know, has crushed it. It's got 27,000 likes on it, 6,000 uh, comments on it, and 9,000 shares. And these guys uh, are pulling in some insane numbers. If you go and have a look at how many ads they're actually running, it's all user generated content. Uh, you know, they've got influencers, they built out a custom landing page, and all those kind of things. And this is what you need to do if you want to separate, um, especially if you want to try and sell any saturated products that has been ran by the masses uh, or drop shipped by the masses in the market. So if you are considering drop shipping any saturated products, 
blogs, you want to make sure that you follow at least one of these three strategies. Hopefully you got some value from this video. Make sure of course you drop a like and a comment down below with any questions that you do have. This is the last video of this year and I just want to say a massive thank you to all of you guys who consistently comment, support and watch my content. It really does mean a lot to me and hopefully that you guys have a fantastic Christmas and a very prosperous new year. If you want to learn more from me personally, then check out my Ecom Discord. The link for that will be down below or alternatively check out my course Ecom Beast 2.0. The link for that will be down below. If you use the code YouTube 100, you'll get $100 off the price. Hit me up on Instagram or Twitter and we can try and connect on there. But that is it for this video. I will see you in the new year.